Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number 277 recorded February 17th 2018. I am your host Drawn Land aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Headmaster Dawn. Everybody. And Jim Black. Hello. <laughs> uh, we've got um, a couple uh, people that would normally uh, be on the show uh, tonight out uh, and they are at Toy Fair 27, or I'm sorry, 2018 in New York. Uh, Rick is there as well as Sergio. Um, and uh, from the sounds of things, they're having a great time there, seeing lots of great things. I posted a video earlier today uh, to the tftalk.net uh, website. Um, Rick shared it to me, and uh, it's, it's low res video, but uh, it's a video uh, clip of the. Uh, flame toys uh, display uh, there at Toy Fair and some really cool stuff that's in there. Um, we'll probably be talking a little bit about uh, more about Toy Fair and reveals uh, later on in this episode. Uh, but tonight our main focus is um, something that Jim Black brought up uh, on. It's all my fault. Yeah, it's all his fault. We can blame Jim. Um, it's, it's a topic that he brought up about a week or two ago uh, in, a, in a private group. And he, was, he suggested that we talk about something that um, really uh, you, you notice it, but you don't. Uh, it's things that once were identifiable with the franchise uh, or uh, things that you would think that were part of the brand. Uh, that have either now faded into obscurity or have disappear, uh, disappeared altogether. A good example of that is rub signs. You know, uh, whenever Generation 1 came out, virtually every Transformer had them. Uh, you know, I mean, well, there were some pre-rub sign versions, but um, it became something that was on every Transformer. Uh, it went away uh, late in Generation 1 and then came back with the reveal of the shield, uh, I believe there were some Beast Wars figures that had some uh, uh, rub signs as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that was uh, that was pre Spark Crystal. Yeah, um, and then uh, it came back then, and then it went away, and then came back with the reveal of the shield, uh, and now it's went away again. Uh, but at one time, uh, there was a point in time whenever we thought that you know rub signs were you know just part of the brand. Uh, another good example, in my opinion, is uh, uh, Tech Specs. You know the full-on bios with the uh, with the uh, the cool card art, and then a, a graphical representation of the abilities of the character. Uh, now we're lucky if we get a one-sentence blurb on the back of the card. Yeah, it's literally a one-sentence blurb for a lot of the movie for most of the if not all the movie figures. Yeah. Well, I know uh, the Power of the Primes. It's literally one sentence, and sometimes it doesn't hardly say anything about the character, really, that that is interesting. Uh, I know uh, I picked up, what was it, uh, Swoop the other day uh, from the Power of the Primes, and his bio, quote-unquote, on the back was just totally uninteresting. I'm like, How why will even bother? Swoop utilize the Power of the Primes? Yes. Uh, okay. You know, that tells me nothing about the character. Um, you know, and it, it is one time very identifiable with the Transformers brand. Uh, every character had a bio. Um, if I'm not mistaken, didn't the Omnibots come with uh, tech specs that was in their instruction booklet or something? I believe no. So. They did not? No, they did, okay, they did not. not. No, I, they had the G1 style a fold out book in black and white with the red highlights on the parts that were moving, but there were no bios. Hey, cause, and this is showing my age here. I, I was, I was on a early transformers mush, huh. uh, multi shared, multi user shared hallucination is one term for it. And I was, I was, I was actually playing downshift and I made him, uh, I had to make up my own backstory for him and he was basically a time traveling, uh, universe hopping temporal agent, hunting hunting down a evil time traveler from his universe because there was no bio for him. So I just made up one. Yeah, but you know, a lot of Generation One characters we got our uh, our 
view of the character, and at least I did, I got a lot of the view of the character from the tech spec bio. Uh, Weird Wolf, uh, my favorite character, obviously. Um, you know, outside of a few seconds of screen time and the rebirth, uh, and the Japanese Headmaster series, and some appearance in the comics, he doesn't have a whole lot of characterization. Most of the time, uh, or most of the characterization that you associate with Weird Wolf, you obtain from his tech spec bio. And, and we've mentioned many, many times on this show how many uh, Transformers just deserved a bio that we just didn't get. You know, I mean, there's lots of generations and lots of... Um, newer figures and newer characters that we just had no bio for and it's it's a lost art uh so you know before we go too much farther into it um jim since this is your topic i'm gonna uh put you on the spot and tell us what your your thoughts are in regards to this topic well, first, let me start by saying welcome to TTY, uh, wait, TTFYLP, the Transformers for your listening pleasure. Because what one thing that has disappeared uh, that was there in the brand's inception was the word the. It used to be the Transformers or the Transformers Generation 2. But anymore, it's just Transformers. So uh, well, you know, that, was, that was one thing. It, it wasn't really a... a a major staple of the brand as say, you know, the rub signs. Uh, but it, but it was still something substantial. And the, and the fact that it was, it was part of the title of the brand. Yeah. Well, well, that, much, well, now that could go ahead. John. I'm oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Now that could have been from the earlier days of getting the brand out there to make it seem like it was, it was sort of parallel to ghostbusters versus the real ghostbusters. Is what because Filmation had Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. and when they want to do a cartoon based on the movie, they used the real Ghostbusters as a as a differentiation to tell the two apart. I, th I think what what Hasbro was doing was calling it the Transformers, meaning this is the definitive arc article. This is the real thing, not one of the KOs or not one of the knockoff companies or not one of our competitors. But it's over not time. Third party. Well, well, the third party didn't exist then, but there was a lot of there was a lot of other there, there was GoBots obviously, and there was converters and well, GoBots. Was, GoBots was pretty much the 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 number one uh, competitor at the at the end right. of the day. But but you had converters, you had Zybots, and everything else. So they used the V as this is the definitive robot toy transforming line but as the brand became more established it became like kleenex <laughs> you know like it it became synonymous with oh transformers you didn't, well, you didn't really need the v anymore. it's it's technically like uh band-aids you know we know them as band-aids but it's actually band-aid brand you know uh, you can have there's generic band-aids you can go to kroger and get band-aids or Kroger brand Band-Aids, but they're not Band-Aid brand, you right. know. Uh, Ad so Ad Adhesive bandages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so whenever you pick up Band-Aid brand things, it's, you know, you, you tell people you got Band-Aids and they know what you're talking about. But, you know, if you are if you want to be specific, I picked up Band-Aid uh, band brand Band-Aids. Right. Um, another thing uh, that comes to mind whenever you mention along those lines, Jim, is a tagline mm -hmm. more than meets the eye. When was the last time you saw that on a Transformers package? That wasn't you know, like a reissue. That's or a something. good point. I, it had to have been. It's been a while. It's been. Yeah, a while. I honestly, with Generation Two. I mean, I mean, surely it's been on there since then, but I can't. It doesn't jump out at me. Well, they had the um, uh, the the modified tagline more, much more than meets the eye during the Masters lines, you know, like yeah. you know, Masters, Target Masters and all yeah. that, uh, which, you know, I thought was a neat little evolution of that tagline. Uh, mm -hmm. But after Generation 1, it really pretty much disappeared. 
Uh, it might have been around in Generation 2, maybe early Generation 2, uh, but I don't think Beast Wars had it anymore. Um, no. You know? I, 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 you're I was, right. I was just yeah. glancing back at my, my uh, entertainment center up here where I have like my Masterpiece Grimlock and that, mm-hmm. and on there I have uh, you know, Devastator, uh, the Combiner Wars Leader Class Armada Megatron, Jetfire, uh, Power of the Primes or Optimus. I'm, I'm not seeing it on any of those. Uh, yeah. follow, follow Cybertron Blaster. I mean, n- nothing. So yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's another one we can safely include. Yeah. So the tagline uh, that once identified the brand, you know, mm-hmm. Transformers more than meets the eye. They're they're not around. It's not or, around. It's not found anymore. To to expand on on that exact thing too, you know, more than meets the eye. Uh, that also uh, harkens back to the uh, the original Anne Bryant theme song from Generation One. I mean, it was it was the whole it, it was the whole uh, part of the part of the the theme song. It's like you know Transformers more than meets the eye. Transformers robots in disguise, mm-hmm. and then you know Autobots did whatever they did to do whatever they did back then. But <laughs> you you all know how it goes, you know. Uh, yeah. To those of yeah, us we, we've heard our, it once or twice. In our generation, we we can sing it verbatim, you know, from memory. Except and, you, you, know, you just t- stumbled through it and obviously well, proved that you couldn't remember the words. I just failed miserably, so I just ran with it. <laughs> um, but the, the the most recent usage uh, that I, I felt was actually a, a, a full uh, harnessing of that uh, that old song was probably Transformers Animated. Uh, the more recent incarnation mm-hmm. of Robots in Disguise touched on it a little, but that th- that version of the song in, in Robots in Disguise, it just... It felt not quite right, you know. Yeah, it was. It, it, it is what it is, but it just it's almost like the tagline is gone but not forgotten. You know, it's like implied. Right. Uh, these are Transformers more than meets the eye. They just don't say it anymore, yeah, and it's just not highlighted. Not, but the films did not have it. I mean, maybe on the CD soundtrack. Uh, what was that Cheap Trick that did it? I think. Yeah. Mute Math. Yeah. 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 And uh, but as then, far as you know. Transformers for the past at least a decade, they've not really utilized it to, to its fullest potential, and it's I think becoming distanced from the brand a bit. Mm-hmm. You know that, that that may change here with this uh, with this next series, uh, Cyberverse, was it? Huh. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm jealous they're getting Shockwave. I'm I'm just saying I'm, I'm jealous. Uh, that that whole line's look, uh, Han, uh, that whole subline looks like a a, a massive turd polished turd to me I, well again it's, it's it's for it's for a much younger, younger it's basically younger graphic, it's, yeah. it's basically replacing rescue bots until rescue bots academy comes out so i mean i mean they need something on the shelf you know we've talked about we talked about this before too you know we know we're beating we're beating a dead mock kick but you know we're not the target audience you know right, so it's yeah. so they need they need the younger stuff out there because this rescue bots is pretty much going away until the rescue bots academy starts um one uh, thing. Now, well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we also see on the back, or not see on the back, is well, one cross sells. We don't see a lot. Of, uh, you know, it's, it's still there sometimes, but you know, you don't see a lot of the cross sell for the. They're other usually on like on the bottom of the package and stuff. The bottom, yeah. or you only have like one or two of the wave. You don't have the rest of them, but they're but it's so small and. Like you said, the tech specs, the bios, um, up until you know, up until Power of the Primes. Well, but the main thing for me is the card artwork. Is one of the things it just seems to be getting. Now, Combiner Wars was, you know, that started getting better. But there for the longest time, it just seemed like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's just the the boxes are just kind of the same generic See, blah. Yeah. I mean, it's like... But on the bright side, it's a step above the dull surprise we used to get about a decade ago, remember? With Prowl and all them, Galvatron. And... See, well, what, was, what was that? Two, 2.0, was it? Universe 2.0? If you really look at it, though, this is... Uh, I'm holding up on the camera, this is a G1 Fangry uh, box. Um, you know, just uh, just looking at the box... Uh, you know, of course, you got the tagline there, more, much more than meets the eye, because he's uh, mm-hmm. 88, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, not, no, he's 87, actually. Is he? Uh, yeah, copyright 1987. Uh, he's an 87. Oh. Uh, so he's got the more, uh, more, much more than meets the eye up there. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, the, there's no cross sales on the outside of this packaging. I'm pretty sure there was, we had, uh, in Generation 1, we had the catalogs, which yeah. was the cross sales in there. Uh, and this is another thing that actually has come back uh, in a lot of, in, in recent years, uh, I think, with the later uh, generations uh, figures, uh, getting a lot of really cool box art. Yeah, um, you know th- th- that's that's what I was going for. Is mm-hmm. that you know the cross sales help you help you show the people at the stores what else you're looking for. That's not that one figure, so you have something to go by. We don't have the catalogs anymore, which mm-hmm. I which I really miss, but. I don't think those are needed as much because you have online. Well, you can look it up. But the thing about the but, but the main thing is is the box art because you want something that jumps off the shelf that that gets your attention. Yeah. And these power do. Of the Pri- yeah. yeah, Power of the Primes does that. They have some phenomenal box art, mm-hmm. and I think I think it's, it's well, a large a part st- to uh, Marcelo Monterey uh, that does a lot of that too. Yeah. So I mean, the power of the prime stuff is really a, a, a phenomenal step above what we were getting, even with uh, you know Titan, Titans Return and stuff like that. And you know, it's just it's it's a lot of little things that work together to make a packaging stand out. Well, speaking of little things, here's something else on mm-hmm. a on a Generation One uh, yeah on a Generation One package that has completely disappeared uh, and has been gone for many, many decades. Uh, and I'm going to hold it up right now, right here. Boom. Robot the points. UPC code. Robot points. The points. The uh, robot Yeah, that's points. what I meant. Uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, here was G1 Fangry, worth two robot points. Uh, you cut them out. You know, there's a little, little perforated line uh, uh, around the robot points. You cut them out, save them up. And send them in for things like the stars base, the uh, you know the omnibots, omnibots reflector. reflector. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just don't have that anymore. They're gone. And see, the robot points used to be one of the most you know identifiable things with Generation One Transformers, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and they were even uh, present with Beast Wars. Beast Wars had robot points. Yes. Yeah. It's so, just. I mean, I don't know why Hasbro doesn't do that kind of engagement with the fan base anymore. Because uh, I mean, you know, money. even you know, it's well, money. it just—it would just seem like they. I mean, there has to be a natural evolution of the robot points at some point. You know, if they can, if they, if you can scan a QR code and download stuff for a mobile game, you should be able to download something in the box that would show that you purchased it and that would be like you it's it's like a reward program inside the box is a piece of paper with a barcode you scan it with a QR code maybe you scan a receipt if it's a bar I mean I don't know I don't know if that would work or not but you would scan the QR code and you would set up an account with Hasbro and every time you scan that if you buy I'm, again this is just I'm sure there's ways of working it out I'm just saying in general Scan the barcode, get the points, redeem the points at a Hasbro, either Hasbro toy shop, uh, something Hasbro sets up as like a little gift center. There, I mean, some kind of engagement with with the buyers of the products is missed. I mean, even if it's just, you know, maybe save up points towards a coupon that you can use in store. I'm I'm just saying examples of trying to get that engagement back, but um. Well, they they do have the the fan vote. I, I think that's that might not, be in, in some in some loose form, uh, uh, still attempting to engage the fans to a degree. Yeah, which I hear a, there's another one coming up. So. Yeah, uh, it was covered. Apparently, apparently there there's uh, coming out of Toy Fair. There's three sets of figures. Now I'm doing this based on what I was told during the live stream on RFC, so I don't know all the details. There's three sets of figures, and you vote on. Which pair of figures in the, each set gets made? We better get all three. Uh, which so well we we well, eventually over twenty years maybe, but uh, it's like there's like a, apparently you've got 
Jazz and somebody Skywarp I, maybe. I think you've got tracks. no tracks is with needle nose. Okay. And then oh, you've got tracks and needle nose, Spinister and Wheeljack, and um, was it was a Spinister uh, and Jazz? I, I, I think it was Spinister and Wheeljack, and then you had uh, uh, Bludgeon and Impactor, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I mean. You've got that, which is which is good. It's just, you know, I, I just think there could be some kind of to make your purchases be worth something, other than just you getting a figure. But again, that's that's for someone who's more in tune to how they can do it in, in the e-commerce e situation now. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I don't like that's been done, especially with the movie figures. Which we don't have to worry about apparently anymore, which we'll talk about probably yeah. a little bit later on. Yeah, we, we could segue into it. Yeah, is these movie boxes for the deluxes? And we've all talked about this before. It's a waste of packaging. They don't look good. The first wave or two, the figures were kind of hidden in the boxes. They didn't match the window for di you know, for the display purposes. Um. They went up money. Now, again, we know the cost of oil. We've, we've talked about all this before. But also, Aaron Archer has said in the past that packaging can cost up to 60% of a toy's retail price. And they're trying, to, they're trying to make these new movie packages look like your Marvel Legends for $20, your Black Series Star Wars for $20, your six-inch figures. They're trying, to, they're trying to make you think there's, there's a... There's more Collect value in the box there's than more, there actually is. There's more is. value in the box. Exactly, Duran. There's more value in this box because it casts aspirations to these other high-end figures. So it just must be these high-end figures. No. Not when the entire first wave is mostly repaints and mild retools from previous lines. Yeah. So, well, you know, I'm on the other end of the spectrum, though. And that, uh, that was something else that I was going to bring up about that uh, about these is that um it's something that you don't see as often anymore i mean it it is making a bit of a com a comeback like you said with with the movie premium line um but uh you know in a more general is you know if, if fangry if g1 fangry were to be released today he would easily have been placed on a card he would have been a carded figure not a boxed figure uh and it also led more to the feeling that whenever you picked up these jun uh, headmaster juniors uh you you felt like you were getting more of a toy than when, what was actually in the box because let's let's face it fangry as awesome as he is is actually a quite a small toy you know i mean he's roughly a deluxe size toy um and the headmaster is about an inch tall uh whenever he's unfolded into into his little little robot mode so he is he is a tiny guy so he would have easily fit on a card but yet he's got this nice big cushy box that he comes in uh, or that he came in um you know nowadays today uh, and and it goes right into what you were talking about don you know it's it's all about cost uh and they're reducing the cost of um you know, the figure by reducing the packaging. But at the same time, uh, for certain figures that they want to push, like the movie toys, they up the packaging in order to, uh, to like, like G1 Fangry here, make you feel like you got more of a toy than what you actually are. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I suspect that's part of it. You know, because it's it, it, the line uh, that line is called the movie premium series. They want you to think you're getting a premium figure, even though the first few were actually just redecoed versions of toys that you probably already had. Yeah, you know? it's it, it, it was mo movie five was 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 the worst launch of the entire movie universe. I agree because I mean you had most of the stores didn't even have around here. Didn't even have the stuff out, mm -hmm. and you know it's just. Well, you know, we could, we could go on and on about what yeah. was done right and what was done wrong with the movie franchise. Um, you know, yeah. for example, 
uh, you know, with the last night, you would have thought that with four previous movies under their belt, they would have had this down to a science. You know, this is what, you know, fans buy. This is what they like. And we're catering to it. You know, we're, you know, giving them new characters from the movie and we're going to cater it, cater to it. No, they did just the same thing they kept doing over and over again. And people were getting tired of it, I think. they, uh, uh, The fans actually spoke with their wallets. People were tired of their shit, honestly. Yeah. And, well, I mean, you know, they flood the market with, I mean, not, not as far as the toys go, flood the market with Wave 1, clog everything up, and then all the stuff that is new is in waves that you never see, have to order online out of frustration because you never see it, or are canceled and just vanish into the ether like vaporware. Mm-hmm. Well, pa- like- Power of the Primes is is a big conundrum in and of itself because Wave 1 is essentially over. It came and went, like, boom, like that. Wave 2 is already on the shelf. People's finding them all over the U.S. already. Um, you know, and it, it's crazy. And how, how fast will that come and go? Um you know, and if you remember, Combiner Wars was much the same way. Combiner Wars Wave mm-hmm. One and Two came and went, uh, and then there was like uh, another flood of Wave One, uh, and then you know Wave Three and Four was a little harder to find. What was Wave Three? The Protectobots. Yes. Yeah, uh, and they were hard to find at retail, at least mm-hmm. around here. So, you know, it, it's it's really confusing how. This distribution beast works, um, but you know we're we're digressing too much from the topic. But you know that that's just something that you know it, it's it's part of the brand. You know it's always been like that. You know back in Generation One, I remember there were characters, toys that you know I had friends that had that lived in other states. I didn't even see them on the shelf where I lived. Uh, you know, for example, Fort Max, I saw him on the shelf one time and that's whenever I was visiting family in Michigan at the time they were living, uh, in Flint and, um, I saw Fort Max on the shelf. I saw Scorponok on the shelf, uh, and I saw Scorponok on the shelf one more time, but I never saw a Fort Max again because he was so flipping big and it was at a mire. I remember that much. Um, and then there were other characters, Omega Supreme. I hardly ever saw on the shelf. Um, you know, the Target Master Cup and Blur were hard to find for me. Um, it, it all, it all depend, depended on your uh, on your demographic, I guess, or, or geographic location, rather. Um, and that is not a lost art. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something that's still prevalent today. And I think it's once the whole problem is, is once things leave Hasbro's warehouse, it's a crapshoot and they have no control over it. Yeah. But getting yeah. back to the topic uh, though, um, Don, uh, did you have any other ideas of, uh, the things that, that once were identified with the franchise, but now are either very, uh, I guess, low key or completely gone. I mean, I've been sitting here thinking about that, and it's just, you know, we've talked about the, you know, the the rub signs, the catalogs, you know, the robot points, the tagline. Um, I, this, I guess, this this is kind of a kind of a fringe thing, but for me. But for me, being able to get the music again, this is this is something that may not mean much to people, but you know, you, with Transformers the movie, we can get the soundtrack, and with the with the movies themselves, we got the scores and stuff. But I would like to be able to go out and get a music CD of the music from Prime or from Animated, you know, Just and I don't. It. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, um, you know, but I mean, I mean, I, you know, I, w- I would like to be able to go out and get the music from these series that doesn't have the show on top of it. Hmm. And, and maybe it is downloadable, but I'm just saying from a standpoint of having having toy related merchandise in stores to buy 
if I if if I wanted to go buy a copy so I could, you know, again, I'm this is me being old, but you know, I'd rather go I, I'd rather go buy a CD and have something physical in my hands to enjoy than downloading something and it taking forever and ever and ever, and then I would have to, you know, do all that. You know, I would like to just be able to go out. You know, I was lucky enough a couple of years ago to get the Japanese set, that, that five-disc set that had all the Japanese music from uh, from Super Robot Lifeform all the way up through Zone. And it's got all the incidental music, the scene change music, the background music, the main titles, clean openings, karaoke versions. I might not, I might not can understand them, but I know that music. And I enjoy those themes, but you can't do that anymore. You just can't get. I mean, even even there's not even available online. It's like, let's say Machinima's power. Uh, let's say Machinima's uh, pa- pra- uh, time to turn didn't suck, and you wanted the music from it. You can't go somewhere and download an album and pay for an album of music from the series, and that's kind of something I miss. Another th- Again, what about I want to I want to agree with ahead, one Don. one point you made just a moment ago, Don. That yes, you are old. Gee, thanks. <laughs> I want to put in the chat a two word reply, and uh, you can uh, check it out later. I'm just saying, yeah. you, you he, guys he are talking about having, having glasses. <laughs> yeah. You guys are talking about you know having remembered seeing Fort Max on the shelves and this and that, you know. Some of my earliest memories, I remember seeing, you know, Slam Dance and Horrid Bull on on shelves at Kmart and Hills, you know. But uh, but no, if if memory serves correctly, Actually, I want to say uh, this, uh, a couple uh, years or this fangry no. here. What's that? Look at the price. Yes, take. yes, Kmart. <laughs> uh, a few months ago, uh, TF Cog, uh, the fan subbing group, they they actually went through and uh, released uh, Generation One background music. From, from oh, the series, they went. Through, oh, really? Yeah, di- digitally removed, you know, laser effects and voices and stuff as, as best they could, and they've got uh, a full rundown of all three seasons uh, now available. Is that so where might, TF uh, Cog? Look out for that. So, What's that, I, uh, I, Jim? TF Cog. Uh, TF Cog dot dot net, I think, or dot com, maybe. Okay, I, I'm just not just aware go, of that. Just Google TF Cog fan sub. I'm sure it'll turn up. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll double check you right quick as soon as my browser opens. But uh, they've they've done uh, fan subbing of different uh, series like Zone and, and you know Beast Wars Second things like that. Yeah. So you know, like, like I said, you know, it, it's that's kind of a weird thing, but and it wasn't all that prevalent, you know, except for the movie, the animated movie and that, but it's just something I guess I, I guess this is basically I miss getting all the peripheral stuff. Yes. Going out and getting tie-in DVDs or you just don't see that much on, in, anymore and it's it's as part of things that don't exist anymore. What you about know, if diecast? I have not talked in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking Depends. about diecast in I, toys. I, I, uh, he, he's he's a lost art. In official toys, we don't get it as much anymore. I mean, masterpiece tends to use it uh, from time to time, yeah. uh, but main mainline toys you, you don't see, see it, it more. Anymore. You see it more in third party than anywhere else. Yeah, for which our, is uh, for, for our viewers and listeners that is tf, the tfcog dot com. Yeah, um, I think I think the problem with that with that Duran is diecast has gotten such a bad rap well, through the years, much like Chrome too, and that was yeah. another another one I was going to bring up. Yeah, it's it's all in the application because you because I think and I think what hurt diecast the most was the titanium line overall because you had some yeah. pretty some pretty interesting figures in that. But all the way to the diecast, like that tank Megatron, the the GI Joe Megatron, the GI Joe Megatron. You know, T, I think TJ Omega rated that the worst Transformer of all time, and diaper wave, and well, sa- even Soundwave could stand <laughs> for the most part. But you know, I think I think that is what put turned people off on diecast because it was overused or not used properly. 
Mm-hmm. It and was then, used for the sake of use, is what it was. Exactly. And Chrome, you are exactly right on Chrome, because look at Hinky. Look mm-hmm. at the weird placement of Chrome in that line. Just, I, I'm a big fan of diecast and Chrome in my toys. If it's well uh, used and, and, and seems to have right. meaning. Even Generation 1 seemed to have some uses of it that was a little questionable. Um, but granted that is first generation toys, uh, of this brand, of this, of this ilk. And, you know, you're, they're going to have some design issues. Uh, that was all throughout the, uh, the series. But nowadays, if you use diecast, you can use diecast in very, uh, sensible ways. Uh, and, and, mm. you know, I'm a fans toys fanboy. I admit it. And there are a lot of their toys. Whenever it uses uh, the use of diecast in it, is usually for balance. You know, helps balance the toy. Um, you know, if it's, uh, for example, if it's a very back heavy toy, then they'll put uh, some heavy diecast metal on the chest to kind of give it that counterbalance. Whenever you stand the toy, he's going to stand there. Or have um, I know uh, several of them have uh, diecast in the feet. You know, uh, or the feet themselves are die cast. Uh, mm-hmm. That that helps a lot. Helps balance the toy, uh, and it's a very good, fair use of die cast metal. Um, chrome, uh, to me, a good, fair use of chrome is like on a truck grill. You know, like on Optimus Prime, uh, you expect a chrome, a chrome grill. It looks pretty uh, on on uh, tire rims. Uh, looks 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 pretty on that. But, like you said, on Henke, there's just random weapons and random things that were chromed. Makes no sense. Uh, and then there's also another bad use of chrome. Uh, for example, Beast Machine's Jetstorm. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it, or Transmetal, uh, anything Transmetal, it just pretty much flakes off. Now, is, is, there, a, is there a major difference between the, uh, the, the standard chrome like you would see on toys and the, the, the vac metal? method that was used mainly on like transmetals and, and, and that are those do two different th- processes I would imagine they're the same process just okay. different I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, like like generation one weapons and and you know generation the, one Megatron compared to the thing with generation one, one weapons it almost looked like they were more dipped I, I could be wrong that looked like they were more dipped in chrome uh, mm-hmm. than they were uh, than they were uh, painted in chrome but I think what it is is uh, the process of chroming a, a, a toy uh, part or or weapon. Uh, it's actually put into a tumbler and like the the vacuum. I, 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 you have to read up on it, but I, if I'm sure. not mistaken, it's actually put into a tumbler of some kind that helps the uh, the chrome stick to it. Um, but there's a there's a process to it. I, I'm not fully versed in it. But I have read on it before. Um, but yeah, those to me are, are lost art things. I mean, we still have some uses of chrome uh, in modern toys. Uh, not so much die cast uh, outside of third party and some and, and some masterpieces. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sunstreaker had some die cast on him. Um, the MP39. Oh. Yeah, I so. Combiner Wars and no, the uh, no the MP thirty nine sound streaker. I think there's some diecast. I mean, he's he's up here. I can't get to him right now. But uh, but yeah, those are some lost uh, lost items in the in the realm of transformers. Uh, some newer things kind of uh, change gears here. Some newer things that uh, were for many years considered a staple of the transformers brand uh, that basically fell off the face of the planet you don't see them anymore mini cons you know they came along with armada and for several years even up into the universe line uh you know we were we were getting some uh, some mini con lots of mini cons <laughs> lots and lots of mini cons please no more mini cons briefly yeah. in one yeah. incarnation in you know robots in the skies but even then, the implementation thereof was 
pretty well. Well, it wasn't customized. it wasn't the same use of them because right. you know, like the minicon ports. Essentially, minicons were like transformer jewelry. You know, it's like look how many minicons I can wear. Uh, you know, it's like it's like this. They, I'm surprised they didn't have a transformer called Mr. T. You know, <laughs> he just I, had I'm minicons re- all I'm over. I'm reminded him. of a uh, of a, a little little comic that someone made using their figures back in the, it was the early days of i think tfw or trans fandom one of them and it had uh armada megatron it was completely covered every port was filled he says ha ha i finally have all the mini cons and then Opt- optimus says to him that's nice but can you move Ma- megatron says crap <laughs> <laughs> um but you know and this this is one thing too uh, where I, I apologize to our, our, our live viewers, uh, where we're not able to be live for the last couple weeks now. My computer is totally crapping out and not wanting to... I mean, it, my CPU maxes out every time I hit the broadcast button. Uh, so I don't know, but I am trying to get a new computer. <laughs> That's what happens when you use fruit. Yeah, no, no. It's what happens when you use an old computer. Uh, but anyway, it's apple fruit. I, I get it, but it's, it has nothing to do with what kind of computer it is. But anyway, what I'm getting at is this is a time whenever I would refer to our live viewership and ask what their opinions of lost uh, vestigial uh, pieces of Transformers uh, lore and and pieces of Transformers history that once was famous and now is gone um you know so if you're watching this now or listening to it later uh please tweet them to us at tfyop on twitter or post them on our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tfyop um you know we'd love to hear from you uh there's lots of other things we could talk about i mean off the top of my head uh you know those are the things that that come to mind uh, come to my mind uh, as things that we once identified with the brand. Uh, can you guys think of any more before we move on? I'm I'm just been sitting here. I, I I really can't think of anything else. It's, we've covered pretty much everything. It's uh, it's just in some ways we're better. In some ways we're kind of not. It's just progress marches on whether you want it to or not. One one thing I've noticed that uh, seems to be uh, quite a bit less common than than it used to be, and, and this is this is something I usually complain about, uh, is translucent plastic. However, it, it is sensibly used in light piping for mm. eyes, and I'm not seeing that much anymore. Granted, I know Titans Return you couldn't very well do that, but like like with uh, with Combiner Wars and now Power of the Primes, like like you know. Uh, you take take Rodimus Prime here, for example. I mean that that is a solid head. You know, it's just just a you know a single single unit front and back, and I feel that could have benefited from some. Uh, I need to hold it in front of the camera. Some form of light piping for the eyes. I I don't think that would have really cost too much extra. If anything, it might might have saved a penny or two. Uh, in the in the overall process, but, you know, I've, uh, I've stated on many occasions I'm a huge fan of light pipe eyes. Right. Uh, you know, because if you place it in the right light or something other, it looks phenomenal. Uh, right. But then there's people on the other side of that spectrum. I know uh, uh, Greg uh, in St. Galvatron, he uh, he says that it gives it the dead eyes look. You know, if, if, if he's sitting on a shelf and there's no light behind him, it looks like his eyes are dead. Uh, yeah. I, I get that, but at the same time, I, I want to have that the ability for those eyes to look like they're lit up from time to time. I, I can still remember the very first time as a, as a child, the uh, very first time I ever saw light piping in a toy was uh, from the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line, uh, Metalhead, where you had uh, in, in the top back of his head, he had his brain exposed, and that was the translucent plastic piece that was also the eyes. Mm. And so when light shone through the top of his head, it, the, the eyes would, would light up. And I thought that was the coolest thing, you know. Well, and and years later, you know, we got it in our Transformers. So, you know, I I like the light piping, uh, but I think if it's going to be a figure in which the eyes are under a visor 
or set further back in the face because of the way the face is designed. I'd rather see it painted brightly Mm -hmm. versus the light piping just because being under a visor or a helmet or something casts that shadow. So I've I've seen light piping used in places where it would just been better just to add a little paint and just have a regular head. Mm -hmm. So again, that's, it's going to be a figure by figure basis though. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, another, uh, another bad use of it is, uh, place light piping eyes on a figure that has like a backpack that sticks up high and mm-hmm. it blocks light coming in from the back. Or, I've, and we've seen this before too, paint over the light piping window on the back. Yeah, I, that's, I was just getting ready to say that. Yeah, it's sort of like it's sort of like Power of the Prime Starscreams has red paint striping down the wings under the foil sticker. Does it and really? The, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it, several people on on uh, Twitter have mentioned that under those foil stickers on Power of the Prime Star Screams, there is some basic paint or tampo work under the wings, and they cover it with with a foil sticker. That's fantastic. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah, but I, I've I've seen uh, figures where they've painted over the light pipe dies as, as well. Um, trying to think of one. Uh, 2006 classics Bumblebee was was that not one where they, they painted over the clear eyes? Seems like they did. I'm, yeah. I'm, th- I'm thinking it was. But off the top of my head, I just I can't think of any particular example that would be a, a good. Uh, a good I know I've seen to. it before. I know uh, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but you also bring up another uh, thing too that was uh, kind of a lost art uh, in that stickers. You know, we see st- we still see them from time to time. I know Titan Returns Trypticon had a huge sticker sheet. Uh, Fort Max had a huge sticker sheet, but we That's just what don't. She said. <laughs> we just don't have uh, a lot of stickers on our toys anymore. Granted, we uh, you know they've been going with uh, the Tampo graphics a lot lately, and Tampo graphics look a lot better you know they're all uh, usually usually look a lot better uh because they're more expertly applied and and last a lot longer um but part of me as a kid part of the enjoyment of a toy was sitting down for five minutes to an to a half hour to sticker my new a new toy it was part of getting to know the new toy, you know, getting mm-hmm. get, getting familiar with your new 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 acquisition. And nowadays, it's just pull it out of the package and boom, there you go, it's ready to go. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, it's I a lost art. There. I agree with you there. Uh, quite a number of figures recently, uh, like you know, uh, uh, Octane and Blitzwing, and you know, even even Rodimus Prime here, you know, they they come packaged. Uh, with stickers already applied, and I, I would Shittily honestly prefer that, that the, for us to have the option yeah. to choose whether or not we'd like to have stickers. Uh, uh, but but when they are applied, I'd like them to be in places that aren't susceptible to getting scratched and shredded. Like Rodimus Prime's back shoulder here has a slash across that. That's Hot Rod's thigh, mm-hmm. and I have to look at it now. You know, it's I'm the exact opposite of Doran. Uh, I never, other than the Autobot or Decepticon symbols. I never put stickers on my figures. I, okay. I just never, I just always, yeah, I, I always just went <laughs> ahead and just put the the faction insignia, and that was it. I, I didn't I didn't have the time, I didn't have the patience, and I didn't care because I was more concerned about the figure being open and on my shelf. But one thing that's been brought up a lot is if Hasbro is going to keep doing these stickers, then stop putting them on the figures put the sheets in the box and put them in the box for us to put on. Mm-hmm. So if we screw up, it's on us. So for the next 20 years, if that Autobot symbol is crooked, we blame ourselves. Right. You but know, so, there, there is a blanket statement here we can make. Thank God for toy hacks. <laughs> yes, exactly. So. They, and they, they are, at, if nothing else, they are the winners in the Hasbro sticker evil contest because they'll be putting out a lot of sticker sheets for the next year and a half mm. for all these figures that They're are coming out. Stickers. So, um, yeah, but you yeah. know that, Toy- go ahead. Jim. I would say uh, toy hacks. That's also known as repro labels. Uh, yes, it were. Yes. Right. 
And it, that actually reminds me of something because uh, a couple things that uh, Toy Hacks or Repro Labels, if you will, uh, offers besides just Transformer stickers are also Power Ranger stickers. And did the license for Power Rangers not recently, as yes. of this week, go of to this... Hasbro? Yes. And they and and for our and for the fans who are listening to this after after this Saturday. They they will be for those fans who know they will be adapting uh, Tokame Sentai Go Busters as be- Power Rangers Beast Morphers, and so that will be the line they'll be adapting for 2019. That makes so, me wonder: Are we now going to see finally trademarked this Optimus Prime Megazord we've read about on uh, TF Wiki for years on the uh, trademark section? Uh, never heard of that. Well, it was, it was an example they had used about you know trademarking different names and stuff mm-hmm. uh, in in that article, and uh, I'm just wondering, you know, since uh, Transformers has crossed over with with Marvel and with you know all all these other things, Star Wars, if we'll eventually in some form see for some reason Power Ranger Transformers, and for no other reason I, than because they I wouldn't probably, I uh, would imagine that we might see some crossover usage of molds, uh, you know, kind of like. Uh, um, you know, Diaclone and, and Microman, uh, you know, was reused in Transformers. Uh, you know, and I'm sure there were some other uses that's, that's all, that I can't think of off the top of my head. But I, I don't see no reason why you can't use one converting line, uh, robot line with another. Um, but, you know, another thing that, uh, that comes to my mind, too, uh, and they went away for a while and then came back and then went away and then come back. Uh, but it's, it's something that in generation one, you started out with the instructions, the instructions, they started out actual photos of the toy. This is the part you need to move. Love that. But apparently that was too expensive. So they just went to illustrations. Uh, but at least the illustrations were large or relatively large. And uh, in high contrast, uh, you yes. could generally see what part you needed to move or where the sticker needed to be placed and things like that. Nowadays, it's usually printed very small on a uh, dark sheet of paper on dark print. Uh, and it's just impossible to see it sometimes. Um, I think it's a lost art of yeah of, uh, of good clear instructions yeah I, I i think both hasbro takara and third party really really need to start either making better instructions or give up on instru- instructions inside and having tra- and having transformation videos on their own dedicated channel well, I'll be honest. By, by, by somebody who knows the product and knows how to transform I, it. I picked up, uh, last night, I picked up uh, uh, KFC's uh, Straddle Tanker, which is their Masterpiece Octane. Uh, this afternoon, I sat down and converted it between all three modes. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, I like the figure. I'm not going to sit here and bash it. Um and I, I'm not going to say that it's better than Unique Toys Provider. Uh, it does some things better, and and the aesthetic is better than Provider. But I think Provider has a better transformation. Um, but uh, going back to the instructions and, and the point that I'm bringing up uh, by bringing up uh, Stratotanker is that in the instructions, for the most part, they are pretty clear. Uh, but there's several parts where you go from one uh, one um, motion to the next, and it doesn't. It, it's like they missed a step in between. You're like, okay, how did you get from this part to this part? Uh, part, you know, and it's in panels that are either right next to each other, or you get to the end of one page and you turn the page, and you're like, okay, how did they get to this part? Mm. And, and so often I see that, you know, it's like a misstep. Yeah. You yeah. Know. It's like being in college and say, this is the start of the problem. This is the end of the problem. This Tell is us stuff what's in the middle. La- yeah. Or like, this is the stuff you had last year. I'm not going to explain it. Let's move on to the next problem. And it's like, 
You can't get to there from there with what? Or uh, it's it's, it's kind of like, like it's kind of like the Common Core stuff that's out now. It's like uh, Bobby has four apples, Jill has three, uh, and their mother gave them twelve. How many does Ted have? Yeah, it's like <laughs> you're like what? <laughs> I don't. Like I, a, I need some information here. You know? <laughs> it's it's like yeah, like you said, Billy has five apples, Sarah has six. What color is the sky in Albuquerque right now? There, there's no correlation between what you're saying and what you're giving. Yeah, I, I, the, I, the answer is clearly Pat Boone. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, you know. You know, but there, there are there's so many good YouTube reviewers out there that do. I mean, I have relied on I have relied on many YouTube reviewers to get some of this third party stuff done properly, because they have much more patience than I do, mm -hmm. and I am not breaking my my figures. Um, well, it's uh, like you know, going it, back going back to that missing step thing with Strato, Strato Tanker. You know, I I fussed around for a good forty five minutes on uh, how the uh, the front of the truck trailer is supposed to collapse in up on itself. I, I, fu I fussed around with four, for 45 minutes with that thing, just trying to figure out how to do it because there was a misstep in the instructions that didn't clearly show you how to do it. It just said, be careful here. And you're like, okay, what do I need to do to be careful? And it just showed a, a, a static picture. Be careful here. Okay. And so here I was for 45 minutes trying not to break a hundred and $130 toy, you know? Um, and fortunately it's, it's, I didn't. It's like a, it's almost like a safety label just says don't. Yes. It doesn't say don't what just, just don't. Yeah. Don't, don't push close to pull open. What? <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's something, you know, good, clear instructions used to be a, a stalwart, as it were, uh, with original, you know, with 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 older Transformers. Uh, I forget where um, the instructions started to get poor. Um, it, I know there was. I know there was some. Uh, there was some. I think in Beast Machines, where the illustrations were kind of uh, rudimentary. It almost looked like a tenth grader. Uh, or because a, or, the challenge was in the change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, now that's the one thing I will say about Beast Machines. The one good point I have about them and that the they use basically the figures grayscale prototype colors. There were they, some they, that were uh, were illustrations though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the but the ones that use the actual gray prototype colors and then marked in white or red what was moving, that was probably the best instructions we had as to seeing what the hell did what. I think that was, I, I count that as the second best, because of the best were the photographs from the early G1. Like, oh, yeah, uh, that's, that's uh, true. You know, that's G1 true. Jazz, G1 Blue Streak, Prowl, they all had photographs in their instructions. Uh, uh, you know, and I, I missed that. Yeah, uh, well, Darren, let me, let me ask you this, Darren, just as, as, as a tangent real quick. With, you know how they're always trying to save money. And you remember they went from plastic ties to those rattan ties to save money and be more economically friendly. Do you think maybe with all the all the stuff going on that they're trying to keep the packaging costs down, that we've got to the point where if they're saving enough, maybe we could go back to those G1 style books at some point if the fans. Ask for I, them. I, I don't foresee them doing that. I really don't. And honestly, uh, here or last, I think it was last year or year before last. I did a no, it was last year. I did the Titan Returns Bumblebee. I did a a sample. I I sat down for several hours, and I f uh, I took a photo of each stage of Titan Returns Bumblebee, and uh, made an instruction booklet, a PDF instruction booklet out of it, and I put it up for people to you know, to tell me what they thought and nobody seemed to care. You know, I mean, granted it was Bumblebee, but it was a proof of concept. You know, it's like, here's photographs of what to do. Here's, here's how the toy should look. You know, there's no, what, what am I, what am I moving here? What, what is that part? You know, 
in a, in a photograph, you can actually see what parts move and where they move to. Um, and I, I thought there would have been a better feedback from that, but most people met, met it with, eh, you know, so yeah. I, I really, you know, as much as I miss it and much as I think the brand still needs it, I honestly don't think people care enough about it. Uh, and, and, and for the most part, mo- most people uh, like to try to transform their toys without even looking at the instructions. Yeah. You know, and I've been guilty of it before. I've opened up a toy and said, you know, I'm going to tackle this without even, lo- uh, I've not even touched the instructions. After six shot with him and his sealed instructions... You know, where they challenged you to not open it unless you really had to. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not doing that again. I don't. I don't. I don't care. No. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I, such a I, wonderful submarine it was. You know, I was I, I was brave uh, a couple weeks ago, and whenever I picked up uh, uh, X Transbots Andros again for the second time, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I regretted selling it, and then I picked up another one, and I transformed it with no instructions. Granted, I've transformed it before, so I, I knew what had to be done, but I tackled it this time without even referring to the instructions again. And I remembered how much of a bitch those, uh, those feet were on that thing. Oh, <laughs> that was, that was, that was the worst part of the figure. Well, everybody, uh, it was at the, the Kentucky meetup last week. Uh, we had it at boom boss. Uh, and, uh, everybody was wanting to see the uh, the figure. I had everything else on him transformed uh, from you know from the head all the way down, and it took me maybe five minutes to get him you know mostly transformed. You know the wings were opened up, the head was up, you know the arms were out, the hands were out, uh, and the legs were turned around the way they were supposed to be. And here I spent twenty minutes each on the on the feet just trying to get them rotated around. And everybody's like, Wow, is it taking it that long? And I'm like, look, this is a clearance that you have to get this big old clawed foot through, you know? And it has to be a specific way just to get it through. And yeah, it's it's a pain in the butt. But you know, being, being being that we've been uh, talking about instructions, uh, I just happen to think of one one feature that uh, they had for, for quite a number of years in the instruction booklets for the brand uh, that has since gone away, which uh, I think a lot of the fans uh, really enjoyed, were the Easter eggs that we got when they would do the uh, instructions with the alternate uh, heads alternate yeah. heads yeah. from the, the shared molds of figures. And it would be kind of a sneak peek at uh, uh, or a preview of upcoming releases that wouldn't, weren't uh, previously announced. Wasn't... Uh... Uh, like dark mount then he come out and we saw the uh, he had skullgren's head yeah skullgren or something yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah that was yeah. Uh, that was that was a neat time that was you know. fun although it was usually spoiled online before we even got the toy but sure. <laughs> uh and that's 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 another thing too and and it is also leads to the instructions uh, argument is that if the instructions aren't good enough, usually if, if you look in the right places, you can find your answers online. You know, uh, like, like Don referred to the, uh, uh, the video reviewers. You know, if I really came to a stump part there on that, uh, on Strato Tanker, and I was almost to that point today, uh, you know, I was going to pull up somebody's YouTube review and fast forward to that part and say, okay, let's see what you did here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I literally don't even bother with with the, with the included. In, I've gave up on even using the included instructions. I don't even look at them hardly anymore. I open the figure. I go straight to a reviewer of my choice. Depends some because some reviewers start with the mode it comes in. Some start in the opposite mode and go to you know how different people do mm-hmm. it different ways. But I don't even bother. I mean, I I don't think I've used an actual instruction manual. In over a year or two, I just go right to a video review if there's one ready because it's just I know what I'm going to run into. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you can think of other things, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, share your thoughts with us uh, on our social media outlets, um, or even on the comments of this video on YouTube. Uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, on your thoughts. What things and transformers that you once considered a uh, part of the brand that is either just not there anymore or very seldomly used. Uh, what are your, your views on this? Um, you know, f- so for the l- next 
I'm wanting to say 10 minutes. Uh, you know, I want to try to hold it to 10 minutes. Um, I don't want to go too much into it because I'm sure we're going to cover it off and on throughout the next coming weeks. Um, but New York Toy Fair 2018, uh, today was the first full day of the show. And we had some uh, news elements. Uh, Don, I'm going to kind of put you on the st- spot since you were on the uh, RFC uh, live cast today about uh, okay. some of the reviews. Uh, what some of the highlights that we are excited to see from New York Toy Fair? Uh, okay, uh, just as a disclaimer, I was not I was not there as the information was being released earlier on. Uh, I came in after work, so I, I'm doing this from memory, and I'm very tired. So there's a lot out there. So go to your favorite website of your choice, uh, T-Formers, WTFW 2005, AllSpark, whatever the case may be, and pick your favorite site and uh, just go through the pictures. But uh, we saw Predaking for the first time. Looks amazing. Fully re- yeah, Predaking fully revealed as Predacons, as Predaking and the box. We saw Abominus fully revealed, a gorgeous, gorgeous figure. Other than they're matching the hands to the character, and not a set color for all hand, for both hands and feet. Perfect so that's effect. Kinda, Perfect. Yeah, effect. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna say anything, but there's that. We see the upcoming Titan Masters. What we see a lot of though, it, well, we see Moon Racer, we see Firestar, who looks I think looks great. Uh, uh, Nova, Nova Star is it? Nova yeah. Star. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it should, it should always be Firestar to me, but oh, it's, sure. like a, it's like it's an RFC. Now I got to find Iceman and Spider Man to complete the set. But uh, 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 but we saw a lot of the new kid friendly lines. It's like the this uh, the Cyberverse with the Bumblebee and Windblade cartoon coming out. Uh, there's some very they're bringing back the Ultra Class, the, an Ultra price point for that. There's a large. Uh, sort of kind of leader for that size price point. Um, there, as we said, you know, like we said earlier, that that's going to be what's taking the place of rescue bots, kind of for the younger kids. So there's, and I'm know, happy to, that they're that they're continuing something for the younger uh, children because you know if this brand is to continue another thirty plus years, uh, you're going to have to have uh, children that come on board with the brand uh, and stick with it um you know and and i fear that eventually transformers is going to get to the point where i don't want it to become another gi joe you know where the fandom has shrunk so small that you know hardly anybody shows up and uh, to the shows and and the movies bomb and it just i, I don't I mean, our, our movies are already bombing <laughs> you know but you know that that leads to another announcement uh, that was from New York Toy Fair in that the live action movie franchise as we know it after Bumblebee is done. Uh, you know, it Michael, is going down in Optimus Prime's flames. Yes. Um, they are uh, looking to reboot it in what, 2021? Yeah, movie, movie 6 is canceled. So whatever cliffhangers you were dying to have answered at the end of last night. And <laughs> the myriad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, unfortunately, there was some fairly decent actors uh, in last night. The the young lady that was the, the the street the orphan, she was a very good actress. I like to see her in future Transformer stuff, which always not gonna be a problem. Uh, and then there's a high patrolman. Um, so yeah, it's uh, hey hey. Goodbye. But uh, on a related note, the movies are canceled, but the studio, the studio series figures are coming out, uh, mm-hmm. celebrating the history of the of the movie line. Well, I, I'm sure we'll always get something that will refer to the movies because let's let's face it, the live action movies have represented the brand on the on the in the general public's eye. For over a decade now, right, right. Uh, you know we're I, getting. I just, I just want to mention briefly the Bumblebee movie is still slated for this year. That, but that is well, the it's, final. It's pretty one. much finished. Yeah. I'm sure it's probably. I'm, right. I'm just hoping already. since it is a prequel, I'm hoping it takes place in such a way 
where it could not just tie into the former films if they wanted to. I fear but that it it's could also just, be a launching pad for starting whatever they do now. I think the Bumblebee movie is probably just going to be a blow off movie. It's it's probably not going to be that good, um, honestly. And yeah, and you know, the problem the problem the is yeah, and if they and even if the movie was good. If they've decided to reboot the line and say, okay, we've had the run, we're done, this part of the story is told, they're going, they're not going to reboot it and then hearken back to it. They're going to make a clean break and say, this is done, this didn't work quite the way we wanted to for the next 16 movies, so... You well, know, I, 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 guess, think... I guess what, what what I was saying is not not so much to harken back to the older films, so much as the the Bumblebee being a prequel wouldn't necessarily have to be tied to the other films because the other films chronologically hadn't even happened yet. So, well, no, no, that's why that's what I'm saying though. Michael Bay never occurred. Well, I'm just saying though, I, the this Bumblebee movie is going to is part of this same continuity. So, yes, th- so even even if you could pigeonhole connections to it for the new continuity uh, i don't think they would because they just they don't want a reference back to that they want they want they, they want the clean break <coughs> and they want the new the new focus yeah on, on the bright side though bumblebee is slated to be a vw beetle is he not i think so I was, yeah i was pretty sure yeah but you know but we got pictures of uh we, we got we got a new lockdown coming a new jazz a new Optimus and Starscream leader class Grimlock. Yeah, I don't. I could care less about Grimlock. Blackout. I, finally, yes. we get a leader class Blackout that looks. Because if any figure should have should have been a larger class size, it would have been Blackout. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm happy for that. Um, we get masterpiece movie Ironhide. Masterpiece movie. He, he does look good. Now, uh, the, we uh, also. We also got to look at Optimus Primal and Optimal Optimus. Yes. The, uh, he was shown off at Toy Fair. Optimus Primal is a surfboard. Yep. He becomes the butt for Optimal Optimus. A transformer that literally turns into a brick. Yeah, You're and welcome. I guess I guess you could call him a thigh master because he. I, I guess he's the. Kind of, maybe it's 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 <laughs> more, much more than meets the eye. Transformers ass masters. <laughs> uh, hey, real, real quick question before we segue too far. Uh, just go back to the movie stuff for just a quick moment. Is the uh, isn't the first wave of the deluxes available for ordering on Hasbro? Yes, uh, yeah, has uh, Bumble the new Bumblebee, Stinger, Crowbar, and Ratchet. R and slash and or were available for order at Hasbro Toy Shop, like what they've done in in, in the past. It, like, like last year, the Star Wars 20th anniversary, the was it 20, 30, whatever it was for Star Wars, 40th, the 40th, yeah, they're yeah, 40th. They were available that day as well. Uh, coupon codes are not valid. Free shipping is not valid. I don't believe because it's just like the San Diego stuff. You know, coupon codes. Codes aren't going to work. You can't dynamics it. So there's that. Right. I was going to get a stinger, but he would have been about thirty shipped, and it's like, uh, I'll wait and see how the reviews are because I'm really don't want to drop thirty dollars for a deluxe because I had I had to drop. They're, they're going to end up in regular retail, aren't they? Yeah, it's just okay. there wasn't there wasn't anything else. Well, there wasn't anything else I wanted to add to it because. Ratchet is doesn't mean much for me. Crowbar looks almost like Berserker. Yeah, I'm sure there's enough differences to the to a more engaged fan of the movies, and I sure as hell don't need another Bumblebee with the Bumblebee movie coming out and me having Masterpiece Bumblebee sitting over there untransformed. So, we have so a swarm already. Yeah. Now, also, on uh, a movie related note, I think uh, it should be stated too that Hasbro. Uh, intends to have much more creative control over yes. the movie reboot. Yes, indeed. And that was something that was that was very evident in uh, in the uh, in the last ten years that they had given Michael Bay so much 
creative license with the brand that it almost became unidentifiable with what Transformers really were, you know. And it's sad that that was, like I said earlier, that that the movie franchise has pretty much been the face of Transformers in the general public's eye for over a decade. And now, the uh, you know, what Michael Bay has put forth is pretty much canon to people that aren't hardcore Transformer fans. And it's brought so many Transformer fans uh, to the brand or back to the brand that they will accept it as canon. And that's what scares me. You know, that a essentially, in my opinion, as a fan since the 80s, uh, a bastardized version of our brand is now becoming the what, what a lot of people will remember. You know, in 25, 30 years from now, will people be clamoring for reissues of those toys? Uh, you know, will it, will it be as memorable then as it is now? We'll see. But uh, go well, ahead. Out Mom. of out of the out of the the different incarnations this brand has had over the decades, um, in my personal head canon here, uh, I'm just I'm so you're locked down up, now. Uh, what's that? So you're locked down now. Or hot rod, same mold. Um, but I'm I'm personally relegating the uh, the live action films that Michael Bay uh, was responsible for to be the equivalent of the Val Kilmer Batman. It just it happened, but we just kind of push it off to the back. And- oh, I I enjoyed that more than I enjoyed probably any of the movies, at least with Jim, with Jim Carrey being the Riddler. Which which, so which the- one was it that had the bat nipples? Was was that that was four? Was that, that, that was, was Clooney? Clooney. That was Clooney. Okay, well e- either one of them. You know, my, Michael Keaton is where we need to go as far as direction. But uh, yeah, so you know, like I said, check out uh, also uh, Titan Masters. Uh, sorry, Prime Masters. Prime Masters. We're seeing Bludgeon, Octopunch, and several others uh, as well. So, check your favorite news site for all the updates. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure, as we get more reveals and more uh, photos from Hasbro, we'll, we'll all be bringing this up uh, over the course of the next few weeks, like Duran said, because there's be a lot of news coming out. I have to uh, say though, and th- this is just me picking nits. Uh, the upcoming Bludgeon Prime Master figure. I I don't know if I'm the only one that this is bothering, but with that Bludgeon figure, I was kind of hoping that the inner Prime Master figure that goes in the shell would have been green and purple to then go inside the more samurai-looking shell. I'm confused. Is, is Octopunch supposed to be some kind of hentai tentacle weapon or something? You know? No. It, it's... <laughs> He's whatever Cannot you want unseen. it to be in your imagination. It's like it's like I can just see Hot Rod taking Octopunch and using him on RC. <laughs> Don just thank you for that. Don just bows off screen. <laughs> it's a virtual Massey attack on his face. Way to keep, way to keep it classy, Duron. Always, way to keep it always. Classy. Don't be a Richard. Don't be a Richard. Huh? Um. So, what else from uh, uh, Toy Fair that was uh, that was announced? Uh. Well, I saw, I saw something briefly when I was scrolling through everything. Uh, I saw an Optimus and a Megatron that had like translucent torsos. What, what's what's that? Uh. Some kind of thing. I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not sure on that. Uh, the only of the big news, really, that I can think of, it's not really Transformers related, but it might be at some point. Is they are now doing a crowdfunding kind of concept, like that, like Takara did for Grand Maximus, and they're doing Jabba's sail barge from Return of the Jedi. It's going to be five hundred dollars. And they need, what was it, a thousand people to sign up for it, for it to be produced and created. That it's four one. feet. It's four feet long. That'll be funded in a week. So, so this may re- this may relate to Transformers later on, if this 
crowdfunding. The, you know, it did work for Grand Maximus. We are getting him. Sans the Prime Master. And they're trying this with uh, Java Cell Barge, which if, if there's any if there's any group of collectors out there that's more hardcore than Transformers collectors, it's gonna be your Star Wars folks. Absolutely. So, and with, if this works, we might see, you know, an um, uh, animated Omega. We might see Scorponok. We, we might see Titan Masters now done this way, with Fortress Maximus not having done as well as Trypticon. I mean, uh, Metroplex. I think Trypticon did pretty well once they got the the the, the, uh, the uh, snapping uh, hips fixed. Wouldn't it be awesome if they did uh, Omega uh, a Titan class Omega Supreme, but instead of turning into a rocket base, they kind of modernized him and turned him into like went uh, went the animated route and made him into the yeah. Ark. That I would be awesome. I I think if if this crowdfunding does take off and they see the viability of it, that's how we'll get our Unicron. Because to be Titan, to be a to be a Supreme Class, uh, Power of the Prime, they'd have to Unicron, make an, They'd have to make an Ultimate Class, and that would have to be bigger than Titan. It you know, and Unicron, well, well, Unicron, and Primus would have to be the only two that could ever occupy well, that point. That the only, price point. I, I definitely agree with you on that, Duran. I'm just thinking it would still be about the same size as your Metroplex. Because if you look at Metroplex and Fortress Maximus, they're basically rectangles that fold down. So there's a lot of engineering in there, like, like but, a surf. It, it, but they don't have to turn into a ball, which I think would take a lot more engineering than turning into a plank. Because balls are more complex than squares. Well, you know, I'm saying with <laughs> with the ring of lights and the folding in and the and the doozies and the watches and the thing of things, but right. uh, I'm I'm just saying that there's more. Pl- I, I say there'd be more involved making a Unicron to be accurate to Unicron I could, I could materials kind of wise. That maybe maybe down the pipeline, but I I don't know if they would necessarily go that route yet. Um, I, I could be wrong, you know. If if that uh, if that barge is successful with the with the Star Wars brand, then you know it's very possible they could uh, segue it, over to us. Yeah, you know, it just um, I just I just can't imagine another Transformers character other than Unicron or Primus where they would they would say this is going to cost us a buttload of money. Let's make sure people are actually going to pay for it first. Of course, the downside is you could wind up with a with another Maddie Collector Castle Grayskull. And for those of you who don't know, check that out on your favorite internet website because the the story is sad and fascinating on that as well. You know it's sad but true. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that'll wrap it up for. Oh, go, go ahead. I, I just had a, a thought on that Omega. You were saying you know rocket base or the Ark, and it occurred to me thus far, aside from Devastator, the Titan class figures have had three modes. So what would it be? too too much of a stretch to have the rocket like, base just uh, also like f- f- into a an a arc spa- a spaceship mm-hmm. so well, you then- still retain your rocket your your little tram system or whatever and your ship it would kind of be like a reverse star wars crossover millennium falcon sure so you, you'd have one robot turning into two things for the rocket base and then recombining for the arc why not Hmm. You, you got two things. Well, you, you got to think can, though. Uh, combine into a robot or into a uh, Winnebago. You, you've got to think though that Omega Supreme is uh, uh, it showed up on the fan vote before, uh-huh. and he's on the radar. It makes That's me wonder. Scorpion. Yeah, it makes me wonder if uh, if if we can actually get him. Um, I, I think so. I mean, Scorponok, we've even got the Titan Master already. So, me, you know. me personally, I like G1 more than animated, so I hope he's more of a rocket base than anything else. But I understand that the animated uh, fandom out there is quite vocal, and it would be awesome to see him turn into th- uh, the art. So maybe if they pulled out, pulled off, um, you know, a, a double doozy there and, and made them combine into one. Um you know, I and I, I'm kind of wondering if that might be the question mark uh, for the fan vote. You know, do you want Omega Supreme? Maybe. I don't know. 
Yes. But we'll see. All right. Uh, I think that'll wrap it up for this episode of TFYLP. Had some great uh, discussions tonight on uh, things that were once part of the brand and uh, are now or not. Uh, again, uh, tell us your thoughts on that. Also, we talked a little bit about uh, the uh, highlights from the New York Toy Fair in, uh, in New York here in 2018. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more information coming out. These, we still got another, what, day or two left of this. Uh, yeah, so um, maybe we'll get some more information out of that. Uh, and we'll cover it on future episodes of TFYLP. I wonder uh, what they'll surprise us with next, honestly. Yeah. Another, Nate. another uh, exclusive figure with no, no advance notice, you know? Maybe uh, maybe an RC that has uh, uh, that's shaped like that that poster that you see that has like the nipples and all that stuff. No, you you mean like uh, like like uh, Insane Galvatron's mouse pad? Yeah, now it, his is raised to where he sits there and, and it, it, he's he's rubbing on the. Never, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don just smiles, takes his headset off. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh my virgin ears! <laughs> my virgin ears! <laughs> no, I just—I've already gone through that one time with one podcast. I really don't want to go through it again with another. Don't tell the me, Don. You've actually that done that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don. No, down, down, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for TFYLP this week. We hope you had a great Valentine's Day. Uh, we, hope the yeah, we hope you enjoyed the toy. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed the toy fair coverage and continue to support TFYLP through our sponsors, CapturePray.com. Great toys, great prices, great service, CapturePray.com. Also, please check out our Patreon page to see how you can continue to support the show. Uh, so we can keep upgrading the equipment and eventually be able to replace Duran with a hamster. A, a, a living one this time. <laughs> oh, now Duran's sad. I will have to say, Don, that was well done. So, Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time on TFYLP for Headmaster Don, Jim Black. I am Duran. We will see you next time. Good night, Take care, everybody. Good night.